Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at the trapezoidal rule. Um, I won't be going into huge detail about how to get the rule, It'll be more about how to use the rule and apply it to certain questions. But I will give you a brief introduction or rundown about what it is. Um, but as I said, it won't be massively detailed. So what I'm going to look at, start off with, is a curve. We're going to use a curve. Um, a function of x is equal to x squared. So what the trapezoidal rule does. Now, certain times it will be interesting for us to look at the area underneath the curve. Let's say between 1 and 3. Okay, that area there will have certainly have some meaning for us and it's something that we are interested in finding out. The only issue is that you know when trying to find the area of that, you know, we don't really have a rule because that's a curved line. And apart from circles, we don't really have uh, rules for, for many curves. Um, so how can we, you know, find the area of that? Well, we use what we call the trapezoidal rule and I guess it's a, an approximation. Because we kind of look at a trapezium if we look outside, or you could try to do an inside line, but it's not going to work too well. But anyway, we can use a trapezium to help us approximate that area. Remember, it's only an approximate value, it was not an exact value. Um, so what's the rule for the area of a trapezium? Well, hopefully you remember, it's half times the height times the A plus B, where A and B are our parallel values. So if I apply that to this particular question, um, we'd have half times, well, how do I get the height? Well, the height is the distance of between 3 and 1, which will be 2. Okay, remember, it's the perpendicular height as well. That's my height of my trapezium, times A plus B. And where, do my, where does my A and B come from? Well, they're the lengths of the parallel side. So that length there and that length here. Problem is, I don't have that length, do I? I don't know how high up that is. I do know, however, that at that point x is 1 and I know the, the function of the curve is x squared so if I want to find out what the function value is at 1 I simply put that into my little function there and it makes it 1 okay which means it's got a height of 1 so that's 1 there likewise I can put 3 into my function machine there and it becomes 3 squared which is 9 okay so I've now got the height of the other side of my trapezium which is now 9 and that now gives me a nice little area of 10 units squared okay so you know a brief rule um, the issue is though that often we don't just do one application of a trapezium often what we do to minimize I guess this extra area here we might do two applications and so sort of split up into a trapezium there and then I might get another trapezium here and so instead of having one function or one trapezium I've now have got two functions or two trapeziums so how does that work well it works very similar to what we just did there except now the height of this smaller trapezium in white I'll do it in white is now well what's that height well if that's half I think I've got two trapeziums there that's going to be the value of two okay now that comes from also this little formula we say b minus a over n where b and a are the values of my x x's here three and one and n is the number of trapeziums I've got which makes it three take away one over two which makes it going a height of one okay so my if I was doing this one in white, I'd say um, a half times one times, well, my first one, we already know was one, but now I've got a new height at two. So two squared, so if I put function two in there, two squared is four. So one plus four. So that's my first trapezium. If I now do the second trapezium, and I, this is the one that's in that mauve sort of color, again, I've got a half times, the height is still one, times now this height we just calculated that was that four that was that four we did and then the last height is the original second height we had there of nine you can see here that we've actually counted four twice and you probably think well if i had to do like maybe four or five trapeziums that's going to take a really long time to do it that way so is there a shorter way and of course the answer is yes there is a rule so the rule that we went through in class for the approximate value 
Now remember we use certain symbols, we use the integral symbol when we're talking about this. Um, I'd say this would be between 3 and 1 of x squared dx, because that's my function, where 3 is often referred to um, as, you know, I guess if I'm doing a general rule, it would be b and a, and this would be f of x dx. No, that's if I'm doing general rule. So we'll do both. We'll do a rule for this particular question and a rule for that one. Um, well, you know, if I look at my rule for the area of a trapezium, we know that it's half times the height. So I can simplify that just to being h over 2. So um, h over 2, actually I'll, I'll do the general rule first. h over 2 times function of the first plus function of the last, now I put F0 and Fn there, 0 meaning it's the very original, the first one, Fn is the last one where n is the last, plus 2 times the functions of the middle values. Okay, now it might sound confusing, but let's have a look at applied to this question we just did. Well, we knew the h was 1 for these two function values, okay, so 1 over 2 times the first function we know that was 4 so that was 1 because that's 1 high plus the last one which was 3 squared which was that 9 there plus 2 times the middle function which was 2 squared which was 4 and that's exactly what I've got here okay that's exactly the same thing and it's going to give me a half or well, 1 plus 9 in this case is 10 10 plus 8 is 18, half of 18 is 9, 9 units squared, which is a more accurate version of that initial one, which I use as 10. Okay. Um, so look, it's a general rule, this one here. Oops, this is my rule for a trapezium or the trapezoidal rule as we call it so we say h over 2 now remember I said the h over 2 the height I might write that down here comes from a quick way your 2x values subtracted so b minus a divided by the number of trapeziums or the number of sub intervals that's the same thing as saying um, trapeziums okay um, that gives my height divided by 2 times the first function plus the last function, plus two times everything in between. So as I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to do that. Okay, It was more about how to um, apply the rule, how to apply the rule. But certainly, hopefully, that gives you a bit of an idea about where it comes from. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this question now. I just said to you previously that the rule is h over 2 times function of the first plus function of the last plus two lots of the functions of the middle. So let's look at this. So how do I do this as a question? Well, my first thing, there's two things I find every single time to make it easier. The first thing, I find my height, which we know is b minus a over n. Well, my b is 5, my a is 1, so 5 take away 1, which we know to be 4. We divide it by the number, n, the number of sub-intervals or trapeziums. I guess, you know, if we're looking at this as a sort of, you know, graph, um, you know, let's say that's going to be 1 and that's going to be 5. It wants to have four sub-intervals, so four trapeziums. So, you know, it splits up into 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you might be able to see, without even doing that little rule for b minus a over n, you could probably figure out the height's going to be 1. It's going up by 1. But of course, we get that by doing 5. Take away 1 is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. I've got my height. So I always start off by looking for my height first. The next thing, I really think this helps. Okay. Um, certainly, you can see that last question. We need to know what the heights were or the A plus B was. You know, the, the how tall um, these parallel lines were. And I said that you know, in order to find that, we knew what the x values were. We had to sub in the x values into the function to find out what the y values were. So what I'd like to do, because, you know, when we're talking about x and y values, we're sort of talking about a function table. 
All right, it makes it a little bit easier. My function, as you can see there, is x squared plus 3x. So I know what my x values are going to be, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm just going to put that into my function table. So 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 6 is 10. 3 squared is 9, plus 9 is 18. 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 12 is 28. And the last one there is going to be 5 squared, which is 25, plus 3 times 5 is 15. We get 40. I do this every single time. You'll start doing things doing to, um, to do with Simpsons rule as well. And I still do this exactly the same for the Simpsons rule. It's just this is a different rule for the Simpsons rule, obviously, that, than the trapezoidal rule. But I still follow my, my process of finding my height and finding my function values. Because now once you've done that, it's just a simple matter of putting in, you know, your 4 and your 40 would be your first and your last. And the 10, 18, and 28, they're all your middle functions. Okay? Um, and that's it. You know, you've got all everything you need there. So I'm going to get some more room. So it's approximately equal to my H, H is 1. So 1 over 2 times... Now, function of the first we know is 4 plus 40 plus 2 lots of the middle, so 10 plus 18 plus 28. And look how easy that is. You know, once you've got that table of values there, I'll tell you, it's just a matter of putting in your calculator. As long as, as, of course, you know the rule um, accurately. And also just make sure that you're typing it into your calculator correctly because you've done all the hard work. You really don't want to stuff up and just make a, a silly error um, like, you know, we tend to do, including myself. Um, but all I'm doing now is putting that into the calculator to get my final answer, um, which should be about 78. So, oops, so write that down, 78. And remember, it's area. There were no original units there, so it's unit squared. And that's my final answer. Okay, so that's it. You know, I said the process will be exactly the same for all these questions. Um, it's just, yeah, making sure you're using the trapezoidal rule. So look at this question here. Um, find the area using trapezoidal rule and four sub intervals. So let's find my height. B minus A divided by the number of trapeziums. Still four for this question, so that, that hasn't changed. Three take away one is two, two divided by four is 0 0.5. I have written it as a decimal. I've done that for a reason, which I'll show you very shortly. Um, second thing, let's draw a function table so I can have some values so I can find out what my function value is going to be so we're going to put we're starting at one now my height is a half so it means it goes from one to 1.5 to two to 2.5 and then to three you can see I start at one like my integral sign says and then I finish at three and you can see clearly that you know I guess if I drew that up, my four intervals, that's one. I'm having one, two, three, four. That's three. You can clearly see that'd be 1.5 to 2.5. So I've got my four um, my four sub intervals. Or they could say function values, which in this case would be five. You've always got one extra function value than you have um, actual sub intervals or trapeziums. Okay, so let's now chuck it into the rule. Okay, that should be nice and easy. So approximately equal to, my h is 0 0.5 over 2. Now, you might recognize that's why I did that as a decimal. Otherwise, I'd have a half over 2, which you probably know is going to be a quarter anyway, but sometimes it, you know, calculators don't like you putting fractions over fractions, so that just eliminates that problem. Um, now, obviously, I haven't got my function values. So that's something I need to go ahead and do. Um, so I'm just going to type those in. So I'll just put those values in there. Um, also, if these aren't, I mean, I'll put them as decimals, but if they come out to be like, you know, thirds or, or, or ninths or whatever you're going to have, and it's going to be, you know, a recurring decimal or, you know, not even a, a rational number, write it in fraction form or write it with, you know, I guess if you're doing log 1, log 1.5, just write log 1, log 1.5. You don't want to round too early. I know we are estimating um, the area, so it's not exact anyway, but we want to try to get it as close as possible. If you start rounding here, okay, you know, putting four and then 6.8, for example, um, you know, it's going to be even more inaccurate. So we don't want that to happen. You know, we don't want to make lose silly marks. 
Okay, so I've got my values there. So it's my first plus my last plus two times the values of the middle. Okay, which you can see there. And then like that last question, guys, it is simply just a matter of typing that into the calculator. My 0 0.5 over 2, making sure that you put it into your calculator correctly. Um, I keep on stressing that because I see it all too often and I'll probably do it myself every now and then as well. Be very careful, okay? Be very careful. Um, okay, I'm just typing that into my calculator now so I can have an accurate amount. So I get 20.75 and hopefully that's what you've got. Units squared. Okay, so you can, you can see that's pretty straightforward once you, uh, you know, you do those two steps. Um, the very last one I'm going to do, uh, let's again start exactly the same. Okay, nothing changes. H equals B minus A divided by um, number of function values, number of um, subintervals or trapeziums. Now here it says you're using two function values. Hopefully you recognize that means, you know, if you've got a graph, if I'm just having two values, I've got a value there and a value there, that means you've only got one sub interval or one trapezium okay so it's just divided by one two take away one is one one divided by one is one okay that works out and because it's two on one you can even see that for my diagram which you could get away with not even knowing you'd be my say over n um, but yeah certainly you can see that so i've got my h value that's my first step now my second step as i said every single time probably didn't need to have it that big because it's only two function values now put my first function value in there, my second function value in there, and simply sub it in to find out what my y value is going to be. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. Um, a lot, very less numbers this time than what we've had previously, which should make it a little bit easier for a rule. You would think, actually a lot of people get this one wrong, they, they freak out a little bit. I'll show you why. Okay, my h value is 1, the rule says over 2 times the first plus the last plus two times the middle. Maybe you might see why people freak out. Can you see anything between these two numbers? Of course you can't. There aren't any there. It's only two numbers. So a matter of fact, that's actually, as you can see, just one trapezium. Half times the height, which is one, times a plus b. It works out exactly the same. Um, so sometimes if there aren't any middle functions, then obviously you're not going to use that in your rule. Okay, you only do it if they actually exist. In this case, it's just half times five, which is 2.5 units squared. Okay, and you're done. Again, you can see, you know, it's, if you find the height first, you write out your table of values, you know, it just is so much easier. It really, really is to use this rule. But again, you need to remember your rule, which is h over two times the first and last functions added together plus two times everything in between, or, or two times the middle. Um, the Simpsons rule, guys, is almost identical in terms of the process. You're still finding your height, you're still trying, finding your table of values, just the rule is a little bit different. I'm gonna do a video on that now, so please make sure you watch that one as well. Have a crack at some of these questions, because honestly, these are easy marks, and they are in nearly every HSC exam. Um, it, it should be an absolute go-to, but you need to remember these rules. Okay, hope this is helpful. Let me know if you need anything extra. Have a great day.